everyone, welcome. I am in the middle of putting away clothes. It's a real mess in here. It's something I really needed to do. Um, so I thought, why don't I record my Q&A for the new channel while doing so? <laughs> Which by the way, the channel is officially called Alana IRL. I was tossed up between Alana IRL and Alana and Friends and went with Alana IRL because there are videos that I don't have any friends in, essentially, so it just made sense. But I still think most of this channel will be full of stuff with friends in it. So, uh, as it existed on my old channel, or I don't know if you have no idea about this, I just got this recently and I think it's very cute. It looks really cute on. So I do a personal Q&A once a month, which means you can ask me questions about absolutely anything except video games. The video game questions go on my main channel, Charolanazard, as is my gamer tag and has been since I was like 14. The question I wanted to answer first, uh, and that's how I always do these by the way, is based on which question I got most often, um, was not technically under the post where I asked for questions, but it was just on the channel, which is people asking, do Rahul and I live together? <laughs> that is the number one most common question that I have gotten on this new personal channel of mine. And it was really funny because I kept replying to people and being like, no, but John lives with me. <laughs> uh, no, Rahul and I do not live together, but he's here all the time. And people would have asked that question because he was in the first video that I made and published on the channel. And I mean, he's been in several since then where he's clearly at my place. And that started off because uh, he got a break from work for a month, kind of for unfortunate circumstances. Also, how dope is this? I love this. It's so cool. When you work at PlayStation, you get access to the staff store and you either get discounts on things or you get um, clothes that aren't available publicly. I imagine this one is. I just got it massively discounted. It's so cute. Because he had that time off, uh, that was the same month that I was cleared to collect Bear, the current foster dog. I had been wanting Bear for ages. He was one of the first fosters that I asked for because I thought he just looked like such a cutie. And so I put in an application and they weren't ready to clear him because he was having medical issues pertaining to his leg. So I wasn't allowed to have him. Um, and then I followed up and I was like, hey, what's up with Bear? Can I take him? Do you still need help? And at that point, the shelter replied and they were like, yep, yeah, but he has to get surgery on his leg. And so I picked him up and I did not know when the surgery would be happening. So I was content to either have a friend look after him or, you know, leave him at a friend's place. Maybe somebody who had a dog or something. I was just going to like be like, hey, can you look after him when I'm in Boston? for PAX or when I'm new in New York with my parents. But then the surgery got scheduled for the day I flew to Boston, the same day. So I was like, Rahul, can you help out, please? So he did. He was the one who took Bear to his surgery and picked him up and looked after him for the early parts of his recovery. And then because, you know, as a dog who just got out of surgery, he barely even moved. So I asked him to also look after Bear while my parents were here. So during that period of time, he did live here. And now I feel like Rahul has just equally fallen in love with the dog. Obviously we also enjoy spending time together. So while he technically does not live here and does have his own apartment, he's here all the time, basically. But no, we do not live together. Again, it was funny to get all those comments to be like, nope, John does though. Hillaby <laughs> Smith asked, you said a while back, that you spend most of your free time playing games, not watching TV shows or movies, but that seemed to have changed more recently. Uh, what motivated you to start watching more shows slash movies, feeling like you were missing out peer pressure, being forced to watch with others who wanted to watch things? Um, I think your perception is wrong, so it's hard for me to answer this question. No, I'm not currently watching any more TV show or films than ever before. I watch the exact same amount. Oh, that's correct. I feel like I'm wasting time whenever I watch TV. Uh, movies, I love going to the movie theater, so I'll always do that. Um, that is just, tr the movie theaters are just an introvert's dream. Because it's like, people think I spent time with them, but I didn't have to talk. And then I just leave. I just get to leave. Dark Empire asked, a question that I get asked all the time is, how do you balance everything in your life between your job, your own YouTube channels, your podcast, charity streams, and personal life? I uh, hope you're recovering well. I am. I'm good. Everything's great. So the truth is, in my opinion, I do not spend as much time uh, chilling as most people do. Um, I don't spend a lot of time browsing social media. This is just my bubble, so I can't speak to it, but I feel like, you know, often in conversations with people I'm close to, they're like, did you see this? Have you heard that? Did you see people saying this? And I'm always like, no, 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 because I don't browse social media. It is time to talk about Manscaped. Whether you're single, dating, in a relationship, it doesn't matter. I cannot stress how important it is 
to have good hygiene, to maintain your body, to look after yourself, to clean. Luckily, Manscaped offers everything you need to groom from head to toe as part of their performance package bundle. The must-haves in here include the Lawnmower 4.0. This is a waterproof body hair trimmer. Got its own little light. Plus the, you, I love to see it, the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant. This stuff is like very clear and smells very fresh. Manscaped has also just released this beautiful set of anti-chafing high performance boxer briefs. I wear these. I've been wearing Manscaped boxes for a long time because they're extremely comfortable. <laughs> Like these ones are extra classy, black with a gold band. Maybe it's time to throw out your tattered old boxes and try some Manscaped boxes 2.0. You actually can if you want to get an all black pack, you can get the black and gold waistbands or you can go gray or pinstripe. They have all the options to suit your style. You also have the option to select just a single unit or you can get a three pack. And yeah, the fabric's just really nice. I can't speak to this new feature they have. They call a jewel pouch design, supposedly extra breathable. I don't have the bits for that, <laughs> but I will say these are really comfy to wear in the gym. So make sure you take care of your pair and get yourself some new Manscaped high performance boxer briefs. Go to manscaped.com today and get 20% off plus free international shipping when you use promo code ALANA20 at checkout. That's 20% off plus free shipping with promo code ALANA20 at manscaped.com. Obviously I post, I'll look for 15 minutes a day, probably maximum. I'll shoot off something funny and then not read a single response to it at all. And I know people will spend a lot of time like hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours reading replies to their tweets if it's controversial. I don't read a single one. So I think social media usage is a very, very big one. And I think that's an important one to note because I think social media has tricked people into thinking that they're being productive. Everyone's burnt out right now. And I fully think that your Twitter feed contributes to it. The algorithm makes it feel like work. You are feeding a machine for engagement. And that feels like work and feels like professional accomplishment when your followers grow or whatever, even if it doesn't benefit you professionally whatsoever. And so it contributes to burnout culture, uh, even outside of your day job, because it feels like work and it's a thing that you are spending five fucking hours a day doing. This does not actually apply to like most people, obviously, majority of the world is not on Twitter, but I still think that's a really big one for me. And with the time that I'm not doing that, I'm making stuff. The other one is not watching TV. Um, don't watch a lot of TV. I'm always playing a game or creating something. The other side of that is just that I just say no to a lot of social engagements. I try to give myself one day off a week, like maybe I'll try and take a Sunday off, but that rarely happens. So it is just constantly working, which is the part of it that I wouldn't recommend on anyone. The using social media less and watching trash that you don't need less would definitely recommend. The overworking part of it, uh, I just can't turn off. I don't know how to stop it. I just feel like itchy, like antsy if I'm not being productive. I feel like capitalism maybe did that to me. What is my value if not making money for a mega corporation? <laughs> Al Sapphire Star said, in relation to the YouTube's collab, YouTube's sorry, collab a while back, how's that process like and how do you feel knowing there's an army of mini alarms out in the world? Um, I wish I had known. Ooh, <laughs> my coat hang was stuck underneath the very cool picture frame that I have the camera suspended from. Um, I wish I had known how customizable they were because I didn't know anything about U2s. I knew that Ethan had one because he's a good friend of mine and I'd seen him post it, but I didn't really know what they were or like how extensive they could get. And I wish I had known how customizable they were because I requested, I think they originally gave me Converse and I was like, can they give me like Nikes? Like, can they give me my off-whites? And they did the closest they could. I asked for a controller and they just tried to give me the most generic one, which I think is fair. But I would have asked for like clothing that I wear more specifically. They nailed my hair. They nailed all of that stuff. Like they just like did that based on pictures or whatever. But I really like wish I had have known cause I don't really wear a lot of like, it's just a black hoodie, which I mean, I do, but there are like more iconic clothing items that I could have put myself in. It would have been those black and white striped tights that I have, they're called Beetlejuice. I would have asked for those and either like a loose t-shirt with the sleeves rolled up because I always do that just like black with like a random logo on it or a zip up hoodie of some kind. Um, I just didn't know how, how involved I could be. I thought it would be harder for them the more I requested. But yeah, that's pretty simple. They just like reached out and were like, hey, we, do you want one? My manager handled most of it. So I don't really know how it went down, but they seem very fun to work with. And yeah, like I said, I wish I, I wish I had known just how customizable they got. Oh, we've said, since you're good friends with Aaron, would you ever do a guest grumps? I am good friends with Aaron. And yeah, I totally would. Um, I've only been to the game grumps office once, or at least it was their old office, which is how I met Aaron. 
uh, I made a no-click documentary for Dream Daddy. And I don't think we've done content together otherwise. I think he's done Funhouse content, but not while I've been there. Obviously, I had Ethan come to Funhouse to make content. I asked Markiplier to come to Funhouse to make content uh, while I was there. But I don't know if I've ever actually made content with Aaron. But yeah, I totally would. Time Scarred Knight said, you mentioned in a previous video, the one where we announced the creation of this channel, that you and Neurodivergent. Divergent. Someone who's on the autistic spectrum would like to know what your experience being neurodivergent has been so far. I am also on the autistic spectrum. There are a lot of things about it that I, I don't know if you're allowed to say this, but like see as superpowers. There are things that are very, very helpful for me. I feel like I am um, hyper rational, like extremely rational to the extent that sometimes people find it cold or emotionless. I'm not emotionless. I have emotions. I'm just very factual, logical. That's the thing that definitely sometimes makes you feel a little bit isolated. But for the most part, I see it as an asset because it means I just cut through bullshit and get to the point uh, of a lot of things. It makes me efficient in my head. Again, I don't know if that's allowed. Am I allowed to talk about it positively? I don't know how the community feels about that, but that's the way I feel. The flip side of that is that I definitely have a lot of trouble with communication, um, especially on the internet, which is difficult as a content creator. I have said this before, but I'll write something like, no. And in my head, no just means no. There's no emotion attached to no. And then people go, wow, sorry, you didn't have to be rude about it. And I go, and that happens probably daily. I just write something that I just think is a fact. No emotion tied to the sense whatsoever, just a fact. I just wrote a fact. And people assign emotion to it, assign inflection to it, assume that it was sarcastic or rude. And I have not been able to fix that because I still don't understand how it happens. I just get really confused. It's very, very frustrating in a lot of cases. Like sometimes I'll just tweet something where I'm like, I'm just tweeting this fact and people are like, well, obviously you're talking about this. And I'll be like, then I would have said that. And they're like, oh, that's convenient. And I feel like that happens a lot. I'm like, no, the thing I wrote is just the thing I wrote word for word. And I didn't mean anything else. People constantly assign the other thing to things that I wrote. And it, that is the definitely the most difficult part because it happens to me in the real world too. I have a lot of trouble figuring out why people assign emotion to certain things that I have not assigned them to. And I guess the flip of that is that I can have trouble understanding just in general why people are emotional about certain things. But uh, it's not something I talk about a lot. Um, this is the most most in-depth I've ever spoken about it, probably. And there's plenty more that I could say. Maybe I'll make um, a video all about it at some point because I, I don't want to deal with the questioning um, that I know women face whenever they talk about this stuff. Generally, anyone else who has autism is always like, you have autism. Like, even when they meet me, like, you have autism. And if I've spoken about it on the internet, even people are like, oh, of course you do. It makes sense. There's only been literally one time where someone was like, I'm autistic and you don't seem like you have autism. And I was like, this, this is, people always fucking know. But I think it's the people who aren't on the spectrum who would come for me. You get called an attention seeker, you get questioned. I just don't want to fucking deal with it. So yeah, maybe I'll talk about it in depth. Uh, maybe like Autism Awareness Day. Um, I think it's a whole month. I got a phone call. Sorry if the shot changed. Okay. George Sanders said, hey, Alana from France. Oh, bonjour. I've been trying to decide what I wanted to do as a job for the last five years and still haven't decided. Have you always known what you wanted to do for a living or have you been cruising life through through life on autopilot? I've always wanted to know what I did wanted to do for a living, which is write. Always knew that. I was writing books when I was a child. I went to a summer camp, writing camp for gifted kids. I was doing extension English. I've always, always, always wanted to be a writer. I've also played video games my whole life and eventually just realized I could combine the two. So it's not like I always knew that I wanted to work in video games, I think it didn't even occur to me that I could, because I never saw women doing it, frankly. It didn't, it, like, it didn't make sense in my brain that that was a thing that was even an option for me. And then I did it, uh, and here I am. But uh, I'm very, 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 very driven and very goal motivated, so I always have known or at least been able to figure it out. But I think that we put a little bit too much pressure on that for ourselves. Like, careers shouldn't be your whole life. You shouldn't feel like you have to figure everything out. As long as you're having fun while you're figuring out what you want to do. <laughs> I think it's okay. Don't don't put too much pressure on it. Also remember, there are extremely successful people who only started in the career that they're famous for when they were 40 or 50. You don't have to decide now. I mean, I don't know how old you are, but you can always change your mind. And that is exciting. Jay Caspian said, just out of curiosity, what podcasts, if any, do you listen to? I do not listen to any podcasts, nor do I watch any YouTubers. Absolutely zero. I also don't watch any Twitch streamers. I feel like that's probably why my content isn't very good. <laughs> I'm not like absorbing anything from the people who make good shit because I just don't consume 
any of it. Absolutely no YouTube, no Twitch. Uh, the only time that I do Twitch is if I'm going onto my own Twitch account for some reason and I see my friends alive and I'll go bug each of them in their chats for like five minutes. Uh, but otherwise, literally none of that. Don't do podcasts, don't do Twitch, don't do YouTube, don't do any of the content creation that I make. And maybe that's also why, it's because I'm making it. And I have to sit there and fucking edit it. I just, I, I'm good. Pickle said, what was your favorite pieces of non-gaming media while growing up? Um, I was a big fan of Spirit, this horse. It's like a, like a stallion, maybe Australian, I don't know. I loved the uh, James Gunn's T Scooby-Doo movie. That was my favorite film, um, next to The Gladiator. For some reason, as like a 10 year old, big fan of The Gladiator. Um, also like, yeah, I mean, it's technically gaming media, but it wasn't games that got me into it. Just, I was just obsessed with Pokemon. I just loved Pokemon as a kid. Uh, as it was designed for us to, of course. Gotta catch them all is, is really children's intro to capitalism 101. Better fucking buy every single one of them, you little shit, or you aren't even a good Pokemon trainer. And all the kids were just really insecure about it. And now my internet is cut out. So I guess I can't read any more questions. My internet has been so bad recently. This video is supposed to go up this week, but I yesterday tried to upload something that was two minutes long and it took me 50 minutes, so... I imagine we're not getting this video up until July. It is what it is. Thank you again to Manscaped for sponsoring the video on the new channel. I appreciate it. Sorry if it's late to Manscaped also. I apologize. Leave any questions for the next Q&A in the comments below and I will see you guys next time.